ChatGPT's latest update includes a dedicated search engine positioning it as a formidable competitor to Google Search. This enhancement, part of the GPT-40 rollout, brings new features that make ChatGPT smarter and more versatile than ever. Let's break down everything you need to know about this exciting development and explore the new capabilities of ChatGPT Search. Here on the OpenAI website, you can see the announcement for ChatGPT Search, complete with a little bit of a demo here of how to use it. You can see there's a button here that we can change from just a little world icon, click it and it becomes blue to let you know that it's activated ChatGPT search mode. More on this later. And here's a few examples of what you might use it for. Coming down the page a little bit, we can see that they're announcing that ChatGPT can now search the web in a manner much better than before. And you can either activate it manually or it will do it automatically. Again, more on this shortly. Be aware that as with most rollouts with ChatGPT, you'll need the premium subscription or the team subscription to be able to access the use of ChatGPT search. ChatGPT search is available on all three platforms, that is, in a web browser mode, on the mobile app, as well as a desktop app. Here we are inside a browser window at chatgpt.com. We can see we're signed in, we have ChatGPT 4.0, by the way, while we're here, you can see ChatGPT 4.0 Canvas has been released. That's in beta form at the moment. And if you haven't used it yet, that's essentially a feature of ChatGPT where you can collaborate live with ChatGPT to create live documents and edit on the fly. It's really good. So check out this video here to see a little bit more about that. And down the bottom here, you can see the icon for search the web. And when we hit that, it actually turns purple and we can put in our query for it to search the web. And if we want to go back to normal ChatGPT mode, just hit the X there. And I already showed you this in introduction, but here we are inside the mobile app and we have ChatGPT4 selected. And then in the message field, we have the button for search. And then to come back to normal ChatGPT mode, just tap it again. Finally, here's the ChatGPT desktop app. And you can see again, we have ChatGPT4.0 enabled and we come down the bottom and here's that search button that actually turns blue here. And to disable it and go back to normal ChatGPT mode, just hit that again. Okay, four things to note about ChatGPT search. Let's go through them one by one. First, it automatically activates and performs web searches for queries requiring current information, ensuring up-to-date responses, such as let's do, what is the weather in Melbourne tomorrow? You can see up here it says searching the web, so it knows it needs to go and search for current information. And it's gone to what I consider is the most reputable site in bom.gov.au. And here's the weather for tomorrow. So you can see in that case, I didn't need to come down and hit the search the web button. It just did it automatically. Second, if you want to do a query where you think maybe ChatGPT won't activate web search automatically, but you want it to use web search, then you can initiate that web search by clicking the icon we showed before, allowing control over when to access real-time data. For example, let's click the search icon and then ask it for what are the latest advancements in AI. And you can see it's searching the web again. And here's our results for that. And we've got a few different answers here with a paragraph for each. The third great thing about ChatGPT search is ChatGPT includes citations in its responses, enabling users to verify information by referencing original sources. So you can see that with each of the answers we've been given, we've got the references to each of the websites where it's actually composed these concise responses from. Financial Times, The Times, New York Post and several others. And then we've even got a preview to these websites here so we could click through that if we wanted. Then down the bottom, we've got a complete list of all the sources. Lastly, for certain queries, ChatGPT incorporates interactive elements such as maps or graphs, enriching the experience with dynamic content. An example of that might be find Italian restaurants in Melbourne. Let's see if it comes back, hopefully with a map showing some of the locations of these restaurants. And this map is responsive, we can move it around. So that's great. And we've got each of our restaurants recommended down here in the bottom. Again, we've got our sources and it's referenced a bunch of different review websites to find the best results. So collectively, these features enhance ChatGPT's ability to provide accurate, current and engaging information, and it really gives it a chance to go head to head with Google search. I'm loving that OpenAI is releasing these constant updates to improve the service of ChatGPT. As I mentioned before, ChatGPT Canvas is a really good way to collaborate on live documents. So check out that video now to see all about that. Also subscribe to the channel so you can get more AI updates as they happen. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next video.